there, listeners. Welcome to another episode of the Snowy's Camping Show. Joined again by myself, Ben, and my colleague, Lauren. How are you today? I'm good. How are good, you? Good. I'm well. If you haven't already, um, first time you visited us, maybe you've been here before, and if you haven't already, please subscribe via YouTube or your favorite podcast app wherever mm-hmm. you listen or watch us. And if you really want to join in on the conversation, we're hoping to get a lot of people in on this conversation today, you can do so at the Snowy's Camping Show Facebook group. So jump on there, ask to join ask questions, join in the conversation, add your two cents. We'd love to hear from you. Today we're talking about a bit more of a technical topic Mm -hmm. on PLB, PLB comparisons and covering off on a few of the differences because- Personal locator beacon. Yeah. It's a- it's sort of a confusing thing and it's a bit like a first aid kit, isn't it? A PLB, mm. yeah, have one. I kind of like to say I've used one. I was thinking about this just before the show. Like I've, I've used a PLB, but I haven't actually ever used a PLB. I've carried a PLB, yeah. but I've never actually used one. Well, that's good. It sits in a spot where anyone knows, my kids know how to use it, mm. um, know when they should use it. It's mm. in a spot where it's always accessible on a hiking or forward drive trip, but we've never in actually used it. In the car, yeah, yeah. or backpack or whatever, mm. but never actually used it. Which is a good thing, right? Yeah, you don't, yeah, of course you don't want is. to have to use it, but totally. it's peace of mind when you've got it. But before we go into too much detail, it's a it's a beacon, right? And there's kind of four different types of beacons. There's a PLB, mm-hmm. as you mentioned, is personal locator beacon, mm-hmm. an EPIRB, mm-hmm. and I didn't actually write down the acronym for this, but EPIRB is for um, water vessel. It's got yes. to be mounted actually on a boat. It's not carried in a pocket. It's mounted to a boat. Beyond two nautical miles. Yes, so you, you were talking about this before. You mm-hmm. can use a PLB on a on a SUP or a kayak or whatever within two nautical miles. Yeah, which the, is equivalent to just under 4K. I think it's like 3.7, 3.8K. Okay, right. We should also pretense this, that these are the regulations as it stands right now. Yeah, current uh, at the time of recording. Th- that's right. Yeah. Uh, and we'll talk about different countries and stuff as well. Important to just check mm. when you have your beacon or when you're using it just what the guidelines are. Mm. There's an ELT, a little bit irrelevant to what we're talking about here because it's yeah. for aircraft mm-hmm. um, and it's got nothing to do with aircraft. Um, I, don't, I don't know what ELT stands for, um, but it's got to be mounted to a plane. I think it's or, like something like electronic located transmitter or something. Sounds like, about I don't right. Know. We'll run with that. Yeah. And then there's satellite messengers, which are kind of like a PLB, but have a bit of extra functionality with messaging and are probably good for solo sort of trips. Yeah. But we'll cover a bit more on that shortly. Mm-hmm. But we're mainly focused on... PLBs and probably those satellite, uh, sorry, the yeah, the satellite messages today. Yeah. So what is a PLB? How would you describe a PLB? Well, it's a it's a personal locator beacon. Obviously, yep. I already said yep. that. <laughs> it's sort of um like it, it, basically it's a, a generally really small, aren't they? Like often they're quite small. Yep. It's basically a, a GPS GPS device. Um, that you know, in the case of an emergency, you can hit a button and mm-hmm. it will send a an emergency, you know, signal via satellite to a, a local, um, what do you call it, mission control centre or, or rescue yep. organisation centre, safety centre within the country that you are currently in. Yep. Uh, and it. Um, so it, it uses the, the search and rescue satellite network and yeah. it has one purpose really and that's if you that's set it, it off – Rescue's coming. Yeah. You, like, you use it in dire straight situation. You can't use it to send a I'm okay message or, you know, I'm I'm stuck but yeah. I'm okay. It's yeah. it's rescue or no rescue. There's two yeah, options. Yeah, it's there. it's it's emergent. Yeah, it's emergency and it's generally um st- things that you would re- uh, they're, they're things that you would it's a button that you would press when it's not reasonable for you to just call in an ambulance or, you know, call in a, a general um, help or, or response that you would do on a mobile phone. They're generally, re- they're generally in situations where you require a more of a broader scale sort of coordinated type yep. rescue. Life-threatening sort Life of situation. Life-threatening, yeah. Yeah, yep. so not to be used lightly but they're there is peace of mind. If a car rolls in the outback and there's no one for hundreds of kilometres, mm-hmm. That's what it's there for to help you yeah. out of that situation. And it is registered through um, AMSA, which I think is the Australian Marine Safety or mm. Maritime Safety Authority. Yeah, that's who that's, we register it here in Australia. Yeah, anyway. so it's like if you, if you, you, regardless of what country you live in, you would register it with the authority of the country you live in. So in Australia, it's AMSA. So if you've purchased a PLB within Australia and you're a resident of Australia, it's registered with AMSA. It won't ever be registered with any other country. You just you just register it with AMSA. Mm-hmm. Um, and of course, obviously, this is 
to like my best knowledge of, of this as well. Yep. And that if you are happening to travel overseas or you're traveling in another country, you just register your holiday plans with AMSA. You don't mm-hmm. change the registration. You don't That's need right. to register your device with with another country. Yeah, so if you just travel, mm-hmm. the, the POB stays registered with your yep. country residence. Yep. If you move, then we'll touch on it a little bit later on. That might be a consideration as to what you buy. Yeah. And then you need to register in the country you, you, you're travelling or you're moving to. But it, it works. So you to cover that off on a broader spectrum, mm. the POB will work in another country. Um, because the COSPAS SARSAT satellite, the search and rescue satellites, mm-hmm. work on an international basis. So if you work yeah, they're Australia, sort of they're sort of like a um, it's sort of like a, a coordinated peace effort, isn't it, between yeah. certain countries? Like there's a huge big long list of countries that are involved in that yep. COSPAS SARSAT network. Yeah. So if we go um, from Australia to Europe and mm. set off our PLB, it's still registered here in Australia. The search and rescue um, response in that country will mm-hmm. respond to your um, r- request for help. Yeah. But your information is still registered in Australia, so that country will then talk to Australia yeah. to then contact. Get your family, your family and get and further information and things like that. One, one thing to note there, though, is that yeah. some – were you going to say this? I some, was. You were? Right, I'll, still, I'll let you do it. No, you go. <laughs> <laughs> so some countries, where she read, some countries are actually illegal to set yeah. off a P&B on, on ground use and mm. um, some – Countries I don't think are even part of the COSPAS SASAT network. Yep. So it's important to check. Yeah, it's illegal to carry a PLB or to set one off. Yeah. So just triple check if you are travelling overseas, which not a huge amount of people are doing at the moment. But the if moment, you no. are, just triple check whether or not it's actually illegal to use a PLB in your country. Another thing too is airlines. Check with the airline. Don't just put it in your luggage. Find out from the airline how you should be carrying that yep. PLB. because Whether think, or not it needs to be on board with you and things like that. Yeah, I don't know what they say you should do, but I did read somewhere mm-hmm. that you want to check with the airline before you before you put it in your luggage. So check where you're going. If you set it off, you will get response, but do your research before you go because yeah. each country is a little bit different. So there are, um, you know, the satellite messages we touched on before, there's a couple of different options for those. The ones that we carry are the Spot the spot and the Zolio. Zolio. Yeah. And then I think um, Garmin also do one apparently as well. We don't carry it. No, in reach. In reach. In reach, I think, yeah. 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 So um, they generally will use a private satellite network and a private search and rescue or personal security response team mm-hmm. that will coordinate. But they're obviously their their primary function as devices is to be a, a messaging system or a messaging service where yep. you don't have mobile phone coverage or you need your mobile phone coverage boosted. But they generally will have an SOS function in them. So they'll just have an SOS button that you can press like you would have if you had a PLB on you. Yep. But in that particular instance, that's going through – private satellite network. So in the case of um, the Zolio and the Garmin, it's using the Iridium satellites and they, I think Geos is their search and rescue organisation that coordinates oh, their- I, um, I did note some of this down, but yeah, I think you're right. That coordinates their response and then you have Spot and they use the Global Star Network and uh, I think their search and rescue response is Focus International focus, or Focus, focus point. point. International, yeah. And they made a like change a, recently, I think. So this could once again change at yeah, the time. Because just, I think they're, they're a private health and security sort yeah. of- firm or whatever, but they ultimately will be the ones that will coordinate the rescue. So from how it's been explained to me in the past is that Spot is um, is an American company as an example. And so if you're in a country where you have to hit that SOS button, instead of it going to that particular country's mission control centre like it would through um, a COSPAT SARS PLB, it will go um, straight to um, spot and their rescue mm-hmm. response team and then that team will coordinate the country that you're in and they will also coordinate with contacting the country that you're from. But they essentially coordinate the whole search and rescue effort through their private avenues that they have of a con- in, you know, from their business in yep. America and liaise with the countries that you're in and things like that. So it's – yeah, it's managed privately instead of done through, you know, a, a public government coordinated operation. Yeah. Do you know if the response time is different? I've, I've not looked into that. I mean, um, I imagine they're all working to do as quick as possible. but that Only, might be only really briefly and it didn't seem to be that, that uh, 
that much of a deal or that much difference because ultimately those companies that's literally their job is to just sit there at their computers and their monitors and their mm. phone lines and coordinate international rescues and, and yep. you know, security situations and all that sort of jazz. So, um, yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I mean, because I guess if you could say, oh, well, you know, what happens if it's a private organisation and what if – something happens and their reach isn't, you know, their power of influence or they're not able to coordinate stuff or whatever. But same same thing can happen on a government level. I'm yeah. not 100% sure if, you know, I couldn't comment over which one is is better. Yeah. I'd or say more reliable. If you were choosing a messenger between between two messengers and, and you've got Global Star and Iridium, it might be more of a consideration to look at where those um, networks offer coverage because mm-hmm. I don't know how old the article was, but what I read some stage recently was that Global Star had sort of holes where Iridium perhaps um, filled in those communication mm-hmm. gaps. Mm-hmm. Could be a consideration in the same sense that you might choose one mobile phone network over another. Yeah, satellite. potentially. Yeah. So, uh, so PLB sends just a search and rescue thing, and it, mm-hmm. oh, it does send a distress signal as well. So it will send like a you can. Some PLBs will send a, a GPS location mm-hmm. as well, so that search and rescue can narrow down uh, much closer where you're located. It not might all of them. it might be worth mentioning though when we were just talking about the satellite messengers is that they will require a subscription service. They do. So yep. a PLB doesn't require a subscription service. Of course, it's just a button. It goes with that Cospas SARSAT system. You're basically covered. But a satellite messenger does require a subscription service and I think if you don't pay a subscription, it can't just be used as a pay, as a basic PLB. No, like I don't think you could carry a, say, a Zolio device, not pay a subscription service and just expect to hit that SOS button and have the same response as you would with a PLB. It won't happen. It's a bit like having a satellite phone, right? You've got to sign up to yeah. a plan with a messenger device. But that does come with a whole bunch of extra benefits. Of course. And probably most beneficial, I'd say, if you're perhaps a solo adventurer or just a couple and you just you really need the ability just to check in and just say to family or friends, I'm okay. Mm. Like, you know, each night or a few times a day or for people to track your um, where you've been or where you are. Yeah. You pay for that subscription, but you get extra features with that and you mm-hmm. still get that SOS function as well. Yeah. So um, I know um, Zolio have a, a um, oh, I don't know, don't know what to call it, but when you're not actually using it, you can drop down to like $6 a month or something like that. So you can still oh, stay registered, yeah. but you're not I paying. I mean, the, sort of like a sleeper fee. thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like a, yeah. Um, so that's. I don't know. Same with Spot. You can, um, like you don't have to sign up for a 12-month contract or something. You can just say, oh, I need it for a holiday. I'm just going to pay for a month. It's sort of like yep. a, a prepay type situation. It's not necessarily locked yeah. into something that you're paying for when you're not actually using it. Yeah, that's right. Mm. Probably I just mentioned too, we're, we're trying to focus more on PLBs here, but mm. the other um, element to consider with a spot, uh, sorry, a, a messenger device and a PLB is that, Zolio is a good example. Um, it requires your phone as mm-hmm. well to mm-hmm. use it, so you, you need to keep both. Does the Spot require up. your phone as well? Because I didn't think the Spot did. I didn't know much about the Spot X before it, um, this episode and I did some research before mm-hmm. and I know the old Spot didn't. Mm-hmm. The new one does have a Bluetooth connectivity and that's there for uh, firmware upgrades. Um, okay. And um, I made a note of a few things. Um, I'll see if I can find my notes shortly, but um, I think you can sync contacts and that sort of thing okay. from your phone. And but you ultimately can also that the- new, that spot X messenger, it has its own keypad on it and it has its own screen. So you're doing your messaging and you're doing everything on that device in and of itself. Yes, but you but can use the app as well, which you is can easier because it's a okay. small keyboard. But on your Zol- with the Zolio device, you need to have a mobile phone and the Zolio device just boosts your boosts your mobile phone signal ultimately. Yeah, so Zolio then works where you've got Wi-Fi and that sort of thing as well because yeah. you've got connectivity through your phone. Yeah. Um, I think you can, from memory, you can pre-program messages to send mm. an I'm okay message, but if you actually want to communicate, then you need the app on your phone to be able to message as you would for the normal text message yeah, service right. on your phone. Um, spot gives you the spot X gives mm. you the option of both. If your phone's flat, you can do it directly on the device, but the interface isn't as good. Oh, the other thing with spot X is you can, um, the screen on the spot X is just a, 
black and white yeah. screen yeah. and you can get waypoints and breadcrumbs and that sort of thing to show oh, where cool. you're tracking. But if you use the app with that, you can overlay that with actual maps. Oh, that's awesome. So you, you get yeah. more functionality out of it so you can use both. So okay. um, we probably won't go into too much more detail, I suppose, on that. Yeah. But that's kind of the difference between a messenger and, and, and a PLB. Mm. For me, I like the PLB because I'm not, I'm not out every weekend doing really remote stuff. Mm-hmm. So the PLB for the most part sits – it's in just my, like in my a glove backup. box or something. Yeah. And it, I just check the battery and do a test once a yeah. year. Um, and I haven't paid for it. I mm-hmm. just stayed registered. I re-register it each year and it's in the car when I need it for a long trip. Yeah. And it's, you know, usually if it's in dire straits. Yeah. Um, but yeah, if you ask someone who's venturing way out of phone range um, by yourself into really remote locations, then potentially doing a message sort of device. A bit longer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Message device might be good because you just need to send as I'm, I'm okay. If or, you need something that's more communication based, not just emergency. Uh, yeah. yeah. So it sends voice and data, not just an emergency yeah. signal. So yeah. 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 And that could even be, I don't need search and rescue, but you know, I do I'm need stuck. to make my mum. Oh, I was going to say I do need to let my mum know that I'm alive. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've got food and water to last me four days. Can yeah. someone just come and help me? Yeah, or something like that. I don't need you know a full blown helicopter to come and mm-hmm, find me. Mm-hmm. I, I can survive. I just need some support. Yeah, and it could be the family and friends can help you. So a bit more flexibility there. Yeah. Anyway, um, but ultimately, you know, we've touched a bit on why you would consider a PLB, but, you know, the obvious points would just be for your own safety. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, if you do foresee yourself in a, in a situation on a trip where something might go wrong and you don't have phone signal and you don't have easy access to local towns or you're not sort of travelling in a large group or things like that, it, they're pretty handy to have on have on board. It's peace of mind. It's peace you know, of mind. If you, and I'm not gonna, just for you either, for your family and your friends absolutely. as well. Absolutely, yeah. I travel with, with my kids, as, as we know, my, mm-hmm. my trip recently, and that sat in the glove box in the middle. The kids know how to use it. They yeah. also know when they should use it. I've said if mum and dad aren't communicating, you can't speak to us, something's yeah. happened, you flick this and you press the red button, put the area up, and they yeah. know where it is and how to use it. Yeah. Um, and it's peace of mind to know that if something does happen, that's there to call for, for help. So. Yeah. And, I mean, I, I've um, – Spent a lot of time obviously working, you know, in customer support for customers online and in the shop and whatever. And I think a large portion of people who purchase these are parents for Mm. their children because they want peace of mind Mm. to know that, you know, their kids have something like this when they're out on their hiking or their adventures or, you know, you know, mum's like, oh, I want my son to, you know, just so I know that they're safe. So even it might not be something that you purchase yourself. It might be something that someone else purchases for you, but their peace of mind is also can sometimes be really important as well. Yeah. You can share it with the family or even you can, you can lend it to other people as yeah. well. I think you can change details online. Like you register it. If you're going overseas, I'm pretty sure you can say someone like else a temporary, has got this. Yeah, temporary, you can. Um, through AMSA. Yeah. Ownership is different, things. but I think temporary is fine through yeah. AMSA. Yeah. But also, you know, I think we've all, we can all recall some sort of rescue attempt on the news or something where there's search out people and for days and can't find someone because they've gone missing in the bush and, you know, it's days and days and days and days. That's the sort of thing that a PLB mm. would get someone to find you in a day. Yeah, you know? because it can locate your position That's if, right. if there's a, for a, a, so, a um, GPS sig- a signal as well. Yeah. If you do you need some sort of uh, search and rescue response they'll be able to find your location because it works on, um, you know, there are two different frequencies and I should have written them down and I didn't, but I do know that there are two ones like 400 and something or other. And the other one is 120. Oh, there's like a homing signal. Yeah. So they're they're two, it'll put off two different signals. The larger one is the broader sort of GPS coordinates, whatever. And the smaller one is for when they're getting closer to you, it can nail down to a matter of meters to help to sort of find you as opposed to your general location. So think, most PLBs will have the co- the capability of both um, mm. that, you know, the broader emergency signal and the homing signal. I think the old ones just used to have that 121 signal and then this 406 thing come in at some stage. I vaguely remember yeah, that. Yeah, I think and that 406 was has been the last maybe – Six years, maybe yeah, five or like six that. years. Maybe, maybe longer. I don't know. Oh, no, it would be I'm longer sort of taking actually. a stab in the dark at Probably that. Probably over a decade, I think, because I've had two and my one I've had them for more than 10 years and the one before that was four or six. But I anyway, think it there was might, a change, I think but. it might actually be not that the change was 
five or six years ago, but that the one that the old units oh, were, discontinued. were no longer legal to be used five yeah. or six years ago. Could be. Could yeah. Be. Yeah. Now, when to not use a POB, we should ha- highlight this. Um, Can I, I just want to make one point because this, um, th- I had a conversation with a person um, once, obviously through Snowy's maybe two years ago and it's always stayed with me and I thought it was really interesting because I've only ever considered people who are going out doing like real remote hectic stuff to take a PLB. Mm -hmm. But this guy had, um, was calling up to purchase a PLB. He was a mountain biker. And he had been mountain biking just in, I think I'm pretty sure it was in Adelaide and he was just cranking through the Adelaide Hills, which, you know, you know, living in the Adelaide Hills, you're never more than, you know, five kilometres away from a house. Mm. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's very urban still. And he'd come off his bike and was thrown down the hill and smashed his phone. But mm. he'd and so his phone was useless. His mm-hmm. bike was sort of up on the track, caught on something. He'd been thrown off the edge of this track, broke his legs, like cl- broke his femur clean in half. Oh, jeez! So he didn't have a PLB, but he was stuck there. And if he cooed loud enough, someone would probably come and find him, you know, soon. Mm. And I think eventually, the rest of the story is sort of foggy in my memory. But he was eventually sort of come across on this track by some other people. But he was saying that you know, that was purely by chance that someone Mm. had come across him and it could have been more than a day. And if he'd, you know, had the bone come out his leg or something and it had been more serious than Mm. just a broken bone, he hypothetically could have been dead and he's less than 15 minutes bike ride from his house in suburban Adelaide. So he was getting a PLB that he could just clip onto his mountain biking bag. Makes sense. And, yeah, I don't know, that always just sort of stuck with me because I thought, oh, that's actually – Pretty reasonable. Like that's a yeah. that's a pretty fair. What's well, life threatening for him? Yeah. Isn't it with a broken bone? If yeah. you're sitting there for that long, it can. And you know, don't necessarily and- consider that that is something that might come in handy. Mm. But if you were if you were out back and you've broken down, yeah, and you've got plenty of food and water, yeah, and you can set up camp for a while and wait for help or someone to come with fuel from mm. the next town. That's not a situation for no. a POB because it's not life threatening. Yeah. So if times you- when you don't need one, that's exactly right. Yeah. If- because, yeah, I think I would say a large portion of people who have contacted Snowy is wanting to advice on what PLB to buy. When you've asked them, you know, what their purpose is using it, their purpose is to cover them for non-PLB situations, which is, oh, yeah, you know, like if I happen to break down, I need to get REA to come and rescue us. Not for PLB. It's not for PLB. Like fair enough. I don't know if you remember in the news recently over the, the rains that happened and there yep. was that family that got bogged mm-hmm. literally in the middle of nowhere. Mm-hmm. Cool. PLB situation. Like you are up to your bumper bar in mud. Yeah. You have no phone signal. You've only got such a short amount of food. You're literally off the beaten track. It's not like you're on a road where anybody is going to come. Yep. That's They'd exhausted all their – they tried to get the car out and, yeah, at yep. some point you need to make a call. Yeah, yep. that it's, it's like, okay, well, yep. if I don't do this, will I die? Yes, okay, well, then I'll press this button. Yep. But it's like if you're just doing fairly remote – travel or regional travel and you don't have good phone signal coverage, it's not a PLB situation. It's not mm-hmm. a good enough reason. In that situation, you would want to be looking at getting a satellite phone or a satellite messenger, which yep. gives you the best of both worlds if yep. that's something that you want to do. Because you can pre-program a message that says not life-threatening, send help. Yeah. And and the location of where you are. Yeah. Like Here's my GP. Yep. Totally. I need a new air filter or something. Mm. Yeah. Or even, you know, you can message your, your kids and be like, you, you know, I'm assuming you might be older if you're spending time touring. Maybe you've got adult kids that are back at home or whatever. You can be like, here are my GPS coordinates are broken down. Can you call the local town for me and, and give yeah. them these details and send them out? Or, you know, there's, if there's, yeah. If I'm it, running a day late. I was expected at this time. I'm running a day late. I'm yep. okay. I'm just going to be home a day yep. late. So it's not it, – it, the PLBs are very much if I don't press this button, will I die? That's yep. basically what a PLB is or could I die? Another important one on um, PLB activation is not to just throw them in the bin because yeah. I think I, – I don't know the stats, but a lot of the re, a lot of the call-outs that search and rescue have, they'll go to a rubbish tip or something to mm-hmm. get a PLB because it's gone in the bin. And it's activated Acc- in the rubbish tip. Accidentally activated in rubbish And it's tip. just sitting there in rubbish. So if you're not using your POB anymore, um, either just I think I've deactivated my old one, but I know it's in a safe spot at home, so it's not going to be activated. But you 
deactivate it so it can't be set off and mm-hmm. then you dispose of it. Don't mm-hmm. don't dispose of it. Even if the battery says it's expired, I you still have to actually it have the device deactivated so that if it, if something happens, that search and rescue doesn't waste all that time and money mm. just for an ax or a, you know a, a non emergency situation. Mm. So now that we've sort of covered the difference between messengers and what PLBs actually are for, and whether or not you need one. You need to decide, okay, I do need one, so which one should I buy? Yeah, well, we'll cover PLBs in more detail. Messenger, I think, just look at all the details and what each of them offer yeah, and check, work out which one yeah, works best for you. What their features are, what their yeah. functions are. Also check their um, subscription plan, subscription services, because the last thing that you want to do is spend a couple of hundred bucks on a device that you think looks pretty good and then realise, oh, I have to spend 60 bucks a month. I'm, I mean, I'm just pulling that, you know, yeah, out my back pocket yeah. here, so I don't know if that's anywhere remotely close, but, yeah. you know, that you have to maintain a $16 a month subscription because nobody yeah. wants that. I think it's also worth just having a look at what those private networks offer in terms of a response because I did read something about a, I think if you're in, say, a, a, an organised event or something, they don't offer search and rescue at an organised mm. event. So if you're in the Fink Desert Race, I mean, there should be help there anyway. Mm. Um, maybe just look at just what that private company constitutes yeah. as a search and rescue effort under what yeah. circumstances. So do a little bit of research. Definitely. Um, if it's for general use, probably just have a look at what it offers through the phone and what what you want to get in terms of your family tracking you and, and all of those features. There's a lot of different features. So Lots of different ones, yeah. But in terms of PLB, I mean, they all kind of do the one same job really, don't they? Yeah, they so do. do they do. Um, so I would – the first sort of things I would ask someone is – what is your primary activity? You, um, you know, are you a kayaker, like you mentioned before? Are you a kayaker, a supper, a recreational fishing person? Um, you know, find out a bit more details about that. Um, whether or not you, how often you travel overseas, where a large portion of your traveling is done, if there's any possibility that you're going to relocate um, as a resident and live permanently in another country. Um, whether or not Australian made is important to you. They're probably yeah. the the main questions so that Australian, I would ask. Australian made, there was a couple of good Australian made ones, but one of them's I've got a KTI, which was Australian it made, was. but that's now been brought out by I can't uh, Nor- I don't know what Norwegian the country's com- called, but it's nor it's a yeah. Norwegian company and we don't do them anymore because I think that um initially KTI stopped manufacturing when sort of COVID issues hit. Mm. We couldn't get our hands on them for ages and then about a year later we found out that they'd been bought out by this Norwegian company Big and company. They'd, they'd sort of been put on hold and weren't being manufactured because I think they were going to take them on and redesign them and whatever. Mm. But we haven't had them for a couple of years now, I think maybe yeah. nearly two years. They had a 10-year battery life and they were good value. So they, they were, were really they were great really value. They were a really popular PLB. It was, a, it was really sad when they... Yeah. When they sort of um, got sold because, like you said, they were super popular. Ten-year battery life, which was the longest in a PLB that I've seen in yeah. ages. Yeah. Um, nice and small, nice and compact. Tiny, yeah. yeah. But other Australian-made, GME is an Australian company and they've they got an Australian-made PLB. Mm-hmm. Um, probably good for general all-round land use, mm-hmm. I would say. Um, you've made a few notes, seven-year yeah, battery I mean, life, I think, which is yeah, about as much as you get. They've got a seven-year battery life. Um, and, of course, when we say battery life, we're assuming that you're not setting off your PLB for emergency response at all. I think when in you that set it case, off, you've got to get a new battery. Anyway. In that case, it's seven years. But if, you know, three years has gone past and you have to set it off, you need to get your battery replaced. Straight and enough. after any time, it, yep. you've set it off. Yep. So when we're talking about battery replacement intervals, that's not having been used. Yep. And you shouldn't test um, it too often too. I think they say I once, think it's a, like year, once a year. I think it's like once a year. Because if you do it too much, you yeah. flatten that battery. But, um, yeah, the GME, uh, the, the Accusat uh, MT410G is the name of their PLB. Um, and GME, obviously they're an Australian company. They make radios and all sorts of stuff, but they've been doing marine radios and EPUBs for a really long time. Yep, make good so gear. they make really good gear. So we know their PLB is also awesome. And it, um, because of how long they've been making marine radios and EPUBs and things like that, they've got loads of service centers all around the world where mm. you can easily get your PLB checked out and your battery replaced and things like that. If you do want to know more about GME, we actually interviewed Tony. Yeah, uh, we did. Back in We Made a Note of It, episode 36, we mm-hmm. came prepared, um, where we talked to him about radios more so 
um, because we just got back into GME radios. I don't yeah, know if we had them before, think, but we got into GME radios. Yeah, we did. And we had a really – it was a fun interview with him talking about um, – you know his his role in the the business and and the background of Jimmy Radios and yeah. all the all the technical details on aerials and UHF what radio radios and all that sort of jazz. Yeah, yeah. So I'm just looking it up now to triple check. We've got the right um, episode number and yeah, episode thirty six. Thirty six. Okay, yeah, check yeah, it cool. out if you want to know more. So um, the GME Accusat PLB is one that I had before my KTI. Um, they were much bigger when I had mine. So this is like fifteen years ago. Mm. Um, Never used it once again, but mm. hey, it works well just sitting in my pack or my car. Yeah. <laughs> not being used, um, which is you good. You use it one day. <laughs> but um, so you can replace the batteries worldwide. You can transition from country to country with a GME one. So yeah. quite a good all rounder. But um, it can also be there's another um, point is now this was raised when we were selling the KTI because the KTI couldn't be uh, what's known as recoded. Okay. And that means if you're moving to another country to live, you have to get the K- the the PLB recoded to the country that you're residing in. So a lot of PLBs will already be coded to Australia and New Zealand, um, but the KTI wasn't able to be. And so that meant also that all battery replacements and everything had to be done within Australia. So the people that, you know, in particular that I was dealing with in that situation had moved country and they didn't know that. And so they were having to send the KTI back to Australia. It was all a bit of a palaver. Righto. But all the all the PLBs that we sell now, I've, I've double checked and they can be recoded to okay. other countries if you choose to, to move overseas. Just on battery replacement too, I, I looked at getting the battery replaced in my GME and mm. it wasn't actually that much cheaper than just buying a new PLB. Because I, I think guess. ultimately the battery, if you think about it, if it's a battery that's lasting seven years and doesn't require to be charged. It's a decent battery. It's a decent battery. Yeah. So by the time we pay for the battery and then it probably needs to get sent off somewhere and I don't know, certify whatever they need to do, mm. it was less. Um, I guess my mindset it goes, well, if I can pay less and not throw something out, then that's better than buying new. But then mm. I think I had to wait and I ended up buying new because it was smaller as well. But yeah. just have a look at the battery costs. Um, but, you know, it's five to seven years anyway, so you're still getting a good good amount of use out of the product. The other thing um, with the, the GME is that it can be deactivated as well. So there's some – uh, PLBs like the Ocean Signal, the Rescue Me, and the um, GME MT four one zero G. That if you do accidentally activate it, there's a fifty second delay before transmission starts. Oh righto. So you can turn it off. Okay, but and once they're on, they're on, right? Once they're on, they're on. You can turn them off, but you do need to call. So I think older versions of PLBs, once they were on, they were on and Mm -hmm. could only be deactivated by a rescue crew. But that's not necessarily the case with a lot of PLBs these days. You can turn them on and you can turn them off again. But there's, um, you know, there'll be, if you have a look through your manual, there'll be indications about whether or not the PLBs already started to transmit. Mm. But even if you don't think that it has started to transmit and you have got it in within like that 50 second window, say on on the GME or the Rescue Me Ocean Signal one, you should still call AMSA yep. straight away and just be like, I accidentally activated my PLB, it's yeah. false alarm, like here's my PLB unit number or there's like a particular registration number for your PLB. Like a quote, hex code or yeah, something. Yeah, something like that, yep. quote that number. Oh, it's going to be pretty embarrassing if the research and rescue turn up and you're having a Vegemite sandwich on the side of the river, so <laughs> <laughs> make sure you cancel Yeah, it. and there's choppers <laughs> and you're like, oh, gee, someone's in trouble and you realise <laughs> it's you. <laughs> I'm all good. Yeah. Now, ACR Rescue Link um, is a – I don't know. Are they – is it an American company, They're ACR? not Australian. Yeah. I, I'm not 100% sure which – country they are which i, I should know it's american but i don't actually know that I've, i looked into it a little while ago but didn't do my research before mm. this episode they but did that, two units yeah one of them's got a little gps like a view acr view yeah, or something the 400 it's called. there's 400 okay. view and there's a standard 400 so that will give you your actual current gps locations yeah so the view. view is the one that and apparently it's got this little like a a wireless Thing on it, so you can hold your phone up to it, and your phone can read, you know, oh, battery yes. life and bits yeah, and yeah, pieces yeah. of I that. Have seen that yeah. um, but it's also got um, that little window, so when you press a button, it will give you your current GPS coordinates, which is helpful in the sense that if you do have if you do have signal on your mobile phone, and but you do need to send someone your GPS coordinates, 
that's that's a handy extra feature that most yeah, PRBs okay. don't have yep. without you having to pay for, a, a say, a satellite messenger which might provide you with that information as well. Could impact battery life, though, I suppose. It and could. That, maybe that's why they say the ACR it's only both five of, years. But both of their units only have a five-year battery yeah. replacement interval. So okay. that's probably on the shorter side mm. um, from other ones that I've seen. The other thing with the ACR is that um, – that can easily that can easily transition between countries and be recoded, so mm. that's not uh, that's not an issue. Battery replacement worldwide also isn't an issue. Uh, it can be deactivated, but there is an instant instant transmission on the ACR. Okay. Like they pretty much say in their instructions, your emergency signal will start to transmit immediately. So you're a bit more uh, red. Already on its way. You're a bit more red faced yeah. if you accidentally activate that one. Okay, and you've made a note here of ACR instant transmission. Is that what you talk about there? Yeah, that it, it's straight away. Yeah. You press a button, they know about it straight away. Whereas yeah. GME's got a delay. Yeah, same with yeah. Ocean Signal. Okay. It's about a fifty second delay. Now, Ocean Signal is a popular one, and mm. the thing w- we were trying to work out before how you'd recommend one over the other because they all do the same job. But this yeah. one's probably good for those that People we talked who do about water sport. two nautical miles, yeah, because yeah. it's waterproof, you're saying, to 15 metres. Yeah, so obviously it's not an EPIRB. So it's not it's not something that you can use on a boat if you're exceeding two nautical miles or, or just under four k's offshore. But a lot of recreational fishermen, like I know most people in, um, in you know, my family who have a tinny or something like that, they're not really going to go more than four k's offshore. Yeah. Um, so they're just going to do, you know, some light recreational fishing. Maybe you're a, sup, a supper and you not like to go for nice big long sups you know, or you're a kayak fisherman um, or just, you know, you like to – kayak for fun, <laughs> who knows, if any sort of recreational water sport, then the Ocean Signal Rescue Me is an awesome option. So because, 15 metres waterproof. Yeah, which which means it can literally, you could you can drop it off the side of your your kayak or, or something. I mean, it's going to float as well, but if all, else fa- if all else fails and you accidentally drop it off the side of your little boat or whatever and it sinks to the bottom, you can just go and get it. <laughs> Unless you're in if like you're, if, unless you're, 30 metres of water. Unless um, you're in 30 metres of water. Yeah. But, but yeah. It, it only floats with a, it, there's a pouch that it goes in for it to float. Or does it float by itself? I can't recall. I think I th- I thought that's probably going to come back to bite me in the in the bottom here, but I thought it had a um an intrinsic flotation device. Intrinsic? Is it intrinsic? In, it's, internal? It's a, that's a big word. Um, I don't know. I'm going to have a quick look. Do it. Um, Ocean Seagull Rescue Me. But, yeah, so they're they're great for um, for multi-sport users. Even though all PLBs can go up to two nautical miles offshore, you're going to want to, if you, if you are a water sports person, you're going to want one that has a 15-metre waterproof rating yeah. over one that has a one-metre waterproof rating. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like it, it's it, that would probably be, in my opinion, the natural choice if you are somebody who um, is a multi-sport user and you and you do have you do do marine wreck as well as land-based adventures. Yeah. So just looking, I'm pretty sure it has a pouch that you put it in for it oh, yeah. to float. So okay. it just needs to be in a pouch which you can then use to attach to your um, life PF, PFD or whatever. So yeah. Um, the ACR. The latest unit. I know they used to have like a floating model and a non-floating model. The floating model was big, yeah. chunkier kind of thing. I. I'd have to double check what the latest ones are. I don't think they've actually got a floating model anymore. They've just got the view and the standard, um, but something else to consider. But you know, I'm pretty sure the GME has a little internal floating thing as well. Okay, but it's not fifteen. But meters it's not fifteen. It's one meter waterproof, I think, or it's I- IPX sixty eight or something. Yeah. So I guess um, in a nutshell, um, Ocean Signal. If you do more water stuff than land stuff, yeah, Ocean Signal. If you do more water stuff than land stuff, for sure. Um, between ACR and, and GME. If Australian made's important to you, go GME. Yep. Definitely. I yep. mean, there's no limitation there like there was with the KTI in terms of battery replacements or recoding to different countries. So if Australian made's important, go the GME. It's also similar to the KTI in that it's nice, small, little little square unit. Um, go for the ACR if you like the look of it, I guess. The, the, the ACR a is a lot fl- flasher looking. Fl- lot it? flasher yeah. looking. And if you want that, um, if you want the ability to access your GPS coordinates and sort of get an update on the status of your device with, you know, with your phone and things like that, then that, that one's a bit more the ACR um, rescue link view. I think it's the view. That's, yep. that's the fancier, more 
tech, techie modern version. Yeah, okay. I think probably the ocean signal one's been really popular just because it's so tiny. And I think realms. I think also um, we've only recently started carrying the GME um, and we stopped doing the KTI about two years ago. So we've had about an 18-month gap, I, I guess, in, in our per- particular PLB range and I think the ocean signal's boosted in popularity since then yeah. because it's like a really great price point um, and – and now, but now we've got the GME one. I think the sort of ocean signal and GME will probably. So I'm just having a look at the GME because I haven't actually looked closely at the new one. It is a really flash looking unit from mm. GME, mm. Um, but it does have inbuilt flotation. Mm. So it doesn't have the same IPX rating, IP68. The ocean signal is slightly more than that. But if you're on top of the water, then that's fine anyway. So mm. I mean, the, the, the ACR is very popular unit as well. Like I've spoken to people, um, you know, in different four-wheel driving groups and scout groups and things like that and they've only ever had an ACR and they'll only ever get ACRs because they think they're amazing and that's that's fantastic. So even though we're sort of going, oh, you know, GME is Australian made and Ocean Signal is great for water sports, it doesn't mean the ACRs aren't awesome as well. They just tend to be a little bit more... Uh, does, at, at a slightly higher price point. They do, ACI does say built-in buoyancy as well. Mm. So funnily enough, the two that are built-in buoyancy have got a, a lesser IPX rating than the Ocean Signal, which needs a pouch for buoyancy. Okay. Well, but, there you go. But, but in reality, we're splitting hairs. Yeah. They're all for, for what they're des- they do perfectly what they're designed for. Yeah. And. I don't know, maybe. I don't know if we've actually more. made this more clearer to people. Probably not. No. <laughs> people are like, which POB would we choose? I don't know. If I went to buy another one today, I'd get GME. And I bought yep. KTI because it was Australian made and we didn't have GME at the time. Mm-hmm. Um, if we had GME and KTI at the time, I mm-hmm. would have been torn. Maybe the battery life would have got me over the line. Yeah. Um, but right now, I would say just because it's Australian made and we're here in Australia, I would buy GME to support Australian products. It all seems to add up and it looks pretty cool. But the thing is, it sits in your pouch and you never get it out anyway. Yeah. So we probably haven't. I mean, I I personally would, um, you know, I've been thinking about getting one because I don't have one. Mm-hmm. And the more, um, you know, that we're adventuring, the more I'm thinking, oh yeah, just to have one exactly like you in the glove box. Um, and I would admittedly be grabbing a GME, but that's not to say because I'm sort of like, oh, if I say, oh, I'd I'd get a GME, I don't want people to think that that's because. Ocean Signal is bad or ACR is bad. They're all really good. They're all really good. It's yeah. just that that's the one that I would personally go with. We've sold Ocean Signal and ACR long before we sold GME. Of course. And we sold KTI before that. Yep. And, I mean, it's a hard question, isn't it? Which one it should I It is a really hard question. They're all going to be the if you, Yeah, especially because we sell them. And it's like you, just because I choose that, it doesn't necessarily mm. mean that it's better. It just, yeah. That's just what's right for me. They all do. They're all, they're all good quality products. Yeah. I don't think there's a cheap PLB on the market. You probably no. want to buy cheap PLB. No. <laughs> Spend a lot of money so on something you never want to use. Same as a first aid kit. Totally. Um, I hope that's cleared it up for some people. I'm not sure. We're, we've come to the end and just gone and I just buy one because they all do the same job. But, yeah, um, we've probably few, generated more questions than well, answers and we've probably said some stuff that people might want to be like, I don't know if that's true. So please feel free to yeah. tell us that. Let's start the conversation. I think sure. part of that is we, we know so much and we did do some scrambling to research a few things before this episode when mm. it gets to technical things like this because – my brain doesn't hold that much information at once. For sure. <laughs> but uh, let's start the conversation online at the Snowy's Camping Show Facebook group. Um, if you've got things to add, things to ask, things you already know, then please just ask away. And like we said at the start of the episode, if you haven't already done so, please subscribe either via our YouTube channel or your favorite podcast app. And that's it for PLBs for today. That was a fun chat just between you and I. No guests today. No guests um, today. We'll, uh, we'll catch you next time and hopefully see you online on the Facebook group. Absolutely. Catch you later. See you guys. <laughs>